use. Welcome back. You're watching All About Ads on NDTV Profit, where we talk about branding. And events as a platform provides just the perfect place to brand yourself. Is that true? We'll find out from Gaurav Garg, who is the ambassador and founder of SERI, Center for Events Research International. Thank you very much, uh, Gaurav. First of all, let's begin with the platform itself. Yeah. How important is it for a brand? For a brand, events become as a part of the cycle of the complete branding process. And uh, at times, for different brands, it's used to, pro uh, to propagate. At times, it's used to uh, engage. At times, it's used to uh, interact. Uh, it just depends on the cycle of the brand, when and how do we use it, at what intensity. All right. Um, everyone would turn around and say, how do you really judge how successful a branding event has been, or a promotion, or an exhibition has been? How do you really um, jot down ROI? Again, ROI is very subjective. Uh, in events industry, we instead of ROI, we look at uh, we do look at ROI as well, but we do also look at something called ROR, which is return on relationships. Um, at times. As I said, events are done for different purposes or uh, different missions and visions in mind. Um, we do at times require a media recall. So if we get the media impressions, we certify that, okay, it was a successful event. At times, events are done for sales leads. And if we manage to get sales out of it, then we say that it is a successful event. At times, it's just about creating a perception of a brand. So you will find it uh, different ways to calculate uh, branding and effectiveness and efficiency of any campaign related to events. We built a whole kind of lounge area for, uh, for Mercedes Benz where people could come and these, these, these were built up in uh, shopping areas where people already are or in, in, uh, in office areas where we were close to the, the lunch, uh, lunch corner and in the restaurant so people in, on their break they could just walk in there, have a look at the car, get a feel for the brand and even do a test drive of a half an hour. Um, so sort of really get an experience of the brand. Very simple, the only thing they had to show was a, a valid driver's license and within five minutes they were off and go. Uh, we in the process collected, collected of course all their, their data, all their details where they live, what kind of car they're driving, so we could all feed that information to the local Mercedes-Benz dealerships, we could follow up, follow up. and um, of these uh, uh, 7,000 test drives we did in three weeks, uh, there's like a conversion rate of like 12%, uh, which is quite easy because these people came into the dealership already with the experience. So it was a quite easy sale, the first thing of picking the collar and picking the wheels and drive out. We'll just take a look at um, Eventful India. That's the event that took place recently that you had organized. And uh, we, you had an international speaker, uh, uh, a whole list of uh, speakers. So let's have a look at that before we continue with the discussion. The reason to make lots of noise is when you change your brand. Communication, without a doubt, will make or break the event for you. You have a huge industry on your hands. Get out there and make a lot of money. Don't forget about the people. We were trying to uh, bring out the case study of the Fortune 500 companies and the way uh, leading event companies around the globe has serviced Fortune 500 clients to establish their uh, you know, goals uh, related to experiential marketing. You, you find amazing list of ideas which probably you can just then customize to the Indian scenario and see what all would work for Indian brands. Before we continue with this discussion, let's just take a look at some of the effective events that have taken place around the world. Have a look.
Those were some of the effective events around the world. Uh, we'll take a look at the challenges that India faces. That's after a quick break. Let's take it from the top. Mr. Chidambaram, our editor survey says you're the best performing minister. I accepted this job knowing that the Congress has a very limited mandate. I think the one word that would go with our company and with the legacy very well is trust. I'm going to die with my boots on. Nobody will tell you retirement. Idiots retire. I'm sorry to say. Idiots <laughs> retire. The big players do business here. We've been able to resurrect the company, pay back everybody. Uh, that was a huge responsibility. This is truly a, a great uh, moment of satisfaction for all of us. Describe to us your meeting with Bill Gates. When I started talking to him, uh, you know, he looked everywhere but at me. For most people who go to school or even go to offices, most Mondays are black. From the top, one more time. First ever television interview, we're speaking to the generation next. I can't say no, the mantle has passed on to us. India's number one business channel. NDTV, profit, news you can use. One channel is making news all over the world. The markets are just not uh, looking bad at all. One would have expected low volumes. The latest business news. Reliance 11 versus Anil Ammani. Well, that was the theme. Did you really expect anything different to happen? The big players talk exclusively to us. First time you've actually gone into the details on NDTV. You can begin the inquiry. I'll come to your center and we'll do it. Non-stop coverage of all the big business headlines. We're tired of using the word historic, but it's a significant day at the markets today. Airbus says it was astonished at the announcement. Indian Airlines and Air India badly need fleet acquisition. Your business is safe with us. What a day it's been here in the Indian market. The ultimate business channel. Just about all the news and all the excitement is out there in the world of business. NDTV Profit. News you can use. Welcome back. You're watching All About Ads on NDTV Profit and we are still talking to Gaurav Garg. He is the founder member of Centre for Events Research International. Thank you once again. Now, let's talk about India. And, you know, we, we do have a lot of very, very interesting events uh, by brands, uh, by companies, whatever they may be. But there are unique challenges that you face. Okay, the, if we start with the challenges, the first challenge is that the industry itself has not understood what exactly it is. Um, to start with, events per se in India is just understood as a live event, which is happening on the stage, a live concert largely. Um, but events industry internationally is not about that. Events industry encompasses three other domains which we just quite ignore them. Um, one of which is exhibitions. Uh, the second of which, uh, and exhibitions basically would start from Pushkar Mela to the trade fairs and to the auto expos. Uh, then you had promotions, which every brand does on the streets. You will have in-shop promotions, you'll have in-mall promotions, you've got on-street promotions happening in. And then the third industry would be conferencing. So there's a lot which is happening in terms of uh, meetings, incentives, conferences and, exhi uh, and exhibitions. They're still unorganized. You, you told me uh, earlier we've, uh, when we were talking that uh, FIKI has actually estimated uh, this industry to be about 1,000 crore. But this does not include promotions, roadshows, exhibitions, conferences. If you include all of that together, it would be 2,500 crore industry. Probably even more than that because uh, something, and that's, that's what we, we are talking about, only organized sector. Now, God of taxation is something that I know that you feel very strongly about. Uh, how can we take this entire, uh, the challenge of taxation? forward what can we do about it first give us an uh, give give us a summation of what the structure is like today okay uh, taxation has been evolving and it has been evolving with uh, respect to different states uh, in india we don't have a uniform taxation structure uh, we are gearing towards that 
like uh, recently in Maharashtra, initially there was something called lease tax, which was at 4%, uh, which has now been with the introduction of VAT, become uh, you know, a VAT. And uh, this 4% tax has now become 12.5% uh, VAT. But when we look at some very simple things like uh, somebody uh, you know, uh, giving event services has not only to give this 12.5% VAT, uh, but he also ha is required to pay 12.36% service tax. So it, it's something called a double taxation. Even more than that, there's another category of uh, tax deduction at source, which is TDS. If you look at the TDS, uh, we are not still clear that are we into which category of services? Are we into contractors and subcontractors category, the event companies, or are we into the category of professionals? And the difference between the two is quite large. An 8% difference is quite a sum. And that actually holds back a lot of time a client to even look at event as an option, as a viable medium. So what are you as, in, uh, as, as, I would say, a part of the industry doing about it? Uh, as an industry body, the idea behind Centre for Events Research International was to collectively put uh, issues um, and, uh, you know, the trends together and put it forward to the relevant authorities. And even before going to the authorities, we just wanted to cohesively put things together amongst ourselves so, uh, and not among ourselves only for the live entertainment genre of the industry but also as an events industry including all segments of but business. is there enough unity within the events industry because that is something that we don't find. I know that's that's something which because there has been a very unorganic growth which has been happening in the industry. People have been, uh, there's not been a specialist exhibition company or not a specialist live entertainment company. Everyone, because the skill sets are quite similar, everyone is trying to uh, move up the value chain and uh, try Outsmart to become a, become a full service event company as like full service, service advertising agency. Nobody sticks to ATL and BTL and they today do almost everything. Now, um, I want to move on to something very, very interesting and important that you brought up. There is no risk assessment over here. Uh, probably the same company that does an event outside has to follow certain rules and regulations that they don't here in India. Why? Do you have some structure in place here in India for your industry to follow? Taking cue from what you said about challenges in the industry, one of the key challenges of the industry is about uh, permissions, about uh, authorities guiding us to do effective and efficient events. And it really can't happen without government machinery supporting us. Uh, one of the very critical issues in the events industry is about permissions. Uh, there are a variety of permissions uh, from state to state, from city to city. Uh, it just differs. And from some places and some magnitude of events which require only five permissions, but that's at least, uh, you even go up to something around 19 permissions to take. 17 to event. 20 are here. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so th there's, there's quite a bit of permissions. And there's been a constant demand from industry side to uh, put up a, something called single window clearance, which we have in developed countries. Uh, putting that as an option to the, uh, to the government, uh, I myself being an industry part would not be very comfortable because it's about very easy to raise issues and not to deliver solutions. Uh, we should even look at, as what you rightly said about risk assessment and health and safety standards, if you look at Indian event companies, they today go around the globe and do events for their clients which exist in India. The multi multi multinational brands um, who hire Indian event companies to do the international events. Um, but what happens when they do go internationally and do events in the United States or uh, UK or for that matter of fact anywhere in the world, they at that time have uh, something called risk, risk assessment to be filled in. There's a risk assessment form, there has been a guidelines, there have been series of health and safety standards which they do follow. Indian event companies rather I'll say who do international events and do this, uh, follow this procedure they should come forward and go to the authorities in India and say that this is what we do internationally and we are ready to give you an assessment in India as well and on the basis of that you give us a risk uh, to give us but a... But is there guidance. a department that looks uh, categorically into this risk assessment? Certainly not of the moment in time but that's something which could be certainly uh, you know looked at. Uh, Gaurav, thank you very much for giving us this insight and uh, we hope uh, to see some unity even within your so-called industry so that it uh, can move forward and help brands. Certainly, I guess uh, that would be in uh, everyone's interest. Thank we you very much for joining me. Thank you. Me on Thanks all a lot, Shruti, for this opportunity. Thank you.